Hello everyone, Tony here from the Iron My Fusion team. And now what are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Now, if anybody knows me, I love the original 80s Transformers. There's just been absolutely nothing that could beat it. Unless your name's Michael Bay and you desperately, desperately tried to beat it. Only you need to be shot dead for what you did to the with the movie franchise. But we're moving away from there. Now, the movie games, I just don't know. I just All I got was just a feel of Grand Theft Transformers. It was just a wannabe GTA game trying to actually be Transformers. But it just didn't work. So then High Moon Studios um, decided to get themselves a license. And they came up with a, a really good title with the first one, with um, War for Cybertron. And then, to me, came up real trumps with their follow-up title, um, Fall of Cybertron. Now, you don't need me to sit there and tell you about the story of the Transformers. But what the main story arc for this one is, is basically, it's going over another reimagined versions of um, the escape uh, from Cybertron. Cybertron's dying out. And um, the war between the Autobots and the Decepticons is now hitting an all new dizzying height. Um, Megatron and Prime are at each other's throats. And the need for um, the Autobots to escape their situation is, is getting extremely desperate. Um, so basically you play through the storyline. Uh, which is a good thing because you start off as the Autobots with the first level being Bumblebee. Um, and then moving on to the next stage where you're Prime. And then there's, again you're Prime for the first stage. But this time you have to escort an extremely impressive Metroplex. As he sits there and just smashes Decepticons to smithereens. All in, all in a battle so the Autobots can escape uh, to wherever they want to go. I'm not going to ruin the end for you because that would just be wrong. But either which way, it's a good, solid story, and only surpassed by the fact with the voice acting as well. Um, Prime is um, voiced by um, Peter Cullen. Oh, thank you. That man cannot get enough. And if he went and told me in Prime's voice that he murdered my cat, I would be okay with that. Um, and also, the original um, voice actor for Grimlock reprised his role after 25 years, so he can once again bring some life to everyone's favourite old dino T-Rex, who enjoys nothing more to stamp on people. And believe me, when you get to his stage in the game, he can stamp on people, quite literally, when he transforms. But that comes to a part of it. Does the transforming part really um, pay off on this one? Well, yes, it does, because all your vehicle modes actually have weapons, and even though they're Cybertronian-style vehicles, they seem to hold their original shapes. Hell, Bumblebee's Cybertronian still looks like a bloody beetle. No, I'm not going to get into that line of conversation. God damn you, Michael Bay. But And then also, the characteristics of these characters. They, they feel like they're from the 80s. These people who really, really made this game really <laughs> like the 80s versions and the game has two reference directly lifted from Transformers the movie trust me if you're a Transformers the movie fan play the game you will see it when it happens because you'll be sitting there going wow I remember that because it's just done word for word perfection and even when you finish the game you get a brilliant rendition of the touch yes that classic track from the film but what about the gameplay well, the gameplay plays really, really well. It's nothing too difficult, nothing real steep learning curve. Um, you can actually get hold of the guns pretty easy. You go hold, hold two at a time, but for me, I just kept it a mix of um, rapid fire attack and then some sort of large explosive weapon. And also, these can be upgraded in Teletran. And like I say, it'll cost you through Energon Shards, which you can pick up from either blowing up various robots oh, and then um, spending them in the shop to actually get additional um, upgrades to the guns. Now I have a tendency to keep to a few guns and there's very other ones, but the taste is all yours. Everyone's got a difference in um, opinion for how they wish to go around murdering people. But what does it go for the original style of Decepticons and Autobots? Well, you've got your cannon fodder style robots, but they still feel a, a good part of it as you're stomping around the landscapes. And the landscapes for themselves are very, very impressive um, as you trips across various things. Like I mentioned with the stage in free when you're actually guiding Trypticon, not Trypticon, Metroplex uh, through the thing. It is absolutely impressive. And then after a cutscene with um, Optimus Prime being captured by Megatron, and then you quite literally smash Megatron into the, f into the ground like a tack, because uh, Metroplex is big fist. It's just so, so satisfying.
So the gameplay is simplistic. It's nothing too difficult. It's just a nice, easy pick up and play. You don't need to be a genius to work all this out. It's a little linear. I don't see that as a bad thing. I probably would have enjoyed a bit more free freedom to go and have a um, Mutra Bowl and have explore a bit more Cybertron, but hey, that would have just made the um, game a bit more um, difficult. But then again, there's also the difference between the various different robots as well, especially when you start getting on the Decepticon um, storyline, there's part of it where you pay various roles of the Combaticons, and then after you've done their little um, parts of their little um, storyline levels, then you actually get the... Um, level where they actually merge to form Bruticus and then you actually take control of one of the big giant co combiners and man this guy is brutal and it, it really really feels that you're invincible while you're this guy even with Grimlock, Grimlock is a T-Rex and this guy once you've got the ability to transform him into his T-Rex mode he kicks ass but even outside of um, T-Rex mode he still kicks ass it's just the sheer matter of you get smaller bug type insect Insectacons, you can just pick them up and just start smashing other Decepticons with them. You really feel the power of the Transformers um, amongst these. And that really, really does make it feel good. If you're looking for an old school nostalgia trip, if you're an old school 80s Transformers fan, I can really not highly recommend this enough. I love the original series and I really think this comes up trumps. High Mean Studios have looked and they have learnt, and they know what Transformers is about from the 80s, and they've put it into great aspect here. But you, you'll probably be sitting the same, but which other ones are in there? Well, apart from Prime, Bumblebee, if you look on the other Autobots, all the, um, all the um, Dinobots are in it, with the exception of Sludge. Um, I think you see him disassembled later on. Then you get yourself uh, Jazz is included, Cliff Jumper. And then you look on the Decepticons, Megatron is just as merciless as ever. It's a really, really good feel of good old-fashioned Megatron. He really doesn't care. He wants results and he wants it now. Soundwave, fantastic. He's even got the old Soundwave-style voice. And then Starscream is such... A joy to actually see this guy being the devious, cunning little worm he was in the original series, and he's still like it now. On this one, then various other ones like Shockwave, the Insecticons, um, and I say with the Combaticons as well. It's really, really good to see these characters once again being given life and given life in a proper context to the original multiplayer. I've not really sat down and played the multiplayer. It's Basically just a sort of shooter style sort of thing. Nothing really to um, really get hold of and really sit there and say, yes, this is awesome. Mm, you could buy various DLC packs to include the amount of parts. There's various different classes, but I didn't really go too far into it. I played it mainly for the story. And for once, this is a game that's worth playing for the story alone. Hell, even its predecessor. Can I say, is there any sort of downsides to it? Well, the original Transformers game was actually set in teams of three, and it was actually multiplayer for the single-person campaign. However, that feature has been lost in this one. It's once again a single-player-only one. But is that really such a bad thing? I, I don't really see that as a hindrance, really, uh, because the gameplay has been tweaked uh, to be played as a single-player. You don't need to have a team of people to get through the game. Um... So, the difference between the first game, uh, which was uh, Battle for Cybertron, or sorry, War for Cybertron, and this one going from a three-man team to a single one, hell, it's it's good. What they did introduce was um, some sort of stealth elements, especially when you get to the stage where you're Cliff Jumper, um, where you can actually stealthily sneak through bases and then try to get past, and if you get spotted, you need to run back. Um, and it's it adds a nice little spin to it, and then also... Robots like uh, Soundwave, um, he can actually sit there and eject Rumble and Laser Beak um, from his cassette deck. So you're like thinking, hell, yeah, this is this is it. this is Soundwave. How are you doing? And as well as having a vehicle mode, he actually transforms into his good old-fashioned tape deck uh, stuffing. And believe me, when you play as Megatron, you know that that guy is powerful. You could just sit there and just stomp through, especially the level where you go to dethrone Starscream and the way you could just sit there and blatter away anything that gets in your way just to prove that he is the boss and he's a boss for a reason let's put it that way is it worth the money well i i reckon yeah i do reckon this is definitely worth the money if you can even if you find a copy second hand in a shop i still say pick it up it's 
de it will definitely be worth your time. If you want a nice, simple action game, hell, get hold of it for this one. Even if you're not a fan of Transformers, I still I will still recommend it as a nice, quick get in there and play some action. But if you're definitely an old school um, 80s Transformers fan. I really would avoid the um, games on the films because they will just leave you disappointed. Um, but go for the um, this one. You will love every moment of it. But that's my honest opinion. But like I say, if you're old school, this is the Transformers game for you. If you're not, well, it's a good action game, put it that way. Transformers Fall for Cybertron is available on the PC through Steam, and also if you can find it in the shop somewhere, it's also available for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. So, that's my own honest opinion of what I consider a great game. And spoilers, they cliffhanger it at the end. So bring on the next game. I've enjoyed your first two. Let's see if you could keep this going. Anyway, Tony signing out for the RMI Fusion team, and I'll see you all soon.